I hear lots of oozing in there. Stone fruit season is here, so today we're gonna be making some unexpected things with plum cots. Hey Biz Bees, it's Zong, and today I'm partnering with Sprouts Farmers Market to share some fun ways to use your stone fruit, particularly these plum cots. So what is a stone fruit? Basically, there are any fruits with a stone pit in the middle. So it could be anything from cherries, peaches, plums, or even a mango. And a plum cot is exactly what it sounds like, a hybrid between a plum and an apricot. So you get these beautiful plum cots. <laughs> I saw so many fun hybrids at Sprouts like a cherry plum, a peacherine and an aprium. Honestly, I wanted to try them all. Sprouts Farmer's Market offers the best prices on the freshest produce and you really can't beat their selection. If you're not familiar with them, Sprouts is a healthy grocery store offering fresh, natural, and organic foods at great prices. Their produce department features seasonal, specialty, and organic items, all at great prices too. Let's get into our first recipe. I thought it would be fun to do a twist on your classic caprese salad. I went to Sprouts Farmer's Market to pick up a few of these guys and the produce manager, Ricardo, sliced open each of the varieties for me. They were all pretty different tasting, yet this red plum cot reminded me kind of like a tomato and I thought it would be the perfect replacement. This one is sweet, yet kind of tangy. So I'm gonna cut this in half and then just slice it up. Let's look at the inside. Isn't that gorgeous? I love that like ruby ombre color going on. I would say like this shade of pink is my favorite color. It smells fresh. Oh, I wanna eat this right now. But now I'm gonna slice it into pretty like thick slices. And then this one will remove the pit. Perfect. So I'm gonna be grilling these to bring out the natural sweetness, but first I'm gonna brush it with a thin layer of olive oil on each side so that it doesn't stick to the grill. Great, let's grill. So anytime I grill stuff like fruits or avocados, I like to brush the grill pan with a little bit of oil just to make sure nothing sticks. And then we just let it get really hot. So now I'm just gonna layer the plum cots right on top. And then we're gonna grill it on each side for about two to three minutes until it has beautiful grill marks. Flip it over and then it's done. Oh yeah, that one's a perfectly grilled plum cot. I love these grill marks. The first one didn't work out so well because I didn't leave it on long enough, but these ones are looking beautiful. So the sugar from the plum cots are really caramelizing with the as you grill them, so that's why you get these beautiful grill marks. So as far as assembling goes, this is as easy as it gets. Caprese salad is basically mozzarella, like the fresh kind, with basil and typically with tomatoes, but now we are gonna add our grilled plum cots. I'm gonna start with a slice of mozzarella, lay it down, and then just grab a piece of basil. I like to let it hang, plum cut. Usually I try to go for, um, slices that are about the same size, and then just keep layering them until you're all done. Okay, last one. All right, so I have two little plums left. Actually, they're quite rather large, so I think I'm gonna tuck this over here. And this one is the chef's treat. Mmm, 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 mmm. It's like smoky, tangy, yet sweet. Have you guys ever tried to grill stone fruits before? I highly recommend it, or if you're into peaches, those grill up great too. And now to really bring out the flavor of the cheese and the plum cots, I'm just gonna add a little bit of kosher salt right on top. Throw it over shoulder for good luck. And then drizzle it with some olive oil. And ta-da, our first plum cot dish is done. This is the plum cot caprese salad. This would be so perfect for like a summer appetizer to serve for guests, they will love it. Now let's move on to our next recipe. Have you guys ever tried a grilled cheese with like a fruity jam stuffed with it? Today I'm gonna be making a plum cot jam and it just really elevates your classic grilled cheese and reminds me it reminds me of your favorite like cheese pastry, but better. So I'm using a more familiar plum cot. This one is the dapple plum cot, also known as a dinosaur egg. 
it does kind of look like a dinosaur egg if we have ever had the opportunity to see one. I'm just gonna cut it up into wedges and we're gonna use two this time. Juicy. So this one, the color is not as vibrant. You get a lot more like greens in here, but I love the taste of this dapple plum cot. I would say it's probably my favorite. It's a lot sweeter than the last red one. So good. And it's gonna be perfect in this jam. Ooh, now this is a pretty color. So vibrant. So let's just cut them into wedges. And then to make it cook faster, I'm just gonna cut it in half. So anytime I cut like a stone fruit, I like to go around the pit and just peel it off. I feel like it's easier that way too. And because I'm cooking this down, I'm not really worried about like bruising the fruit. Ta-da! Look how juicy this is. So sweet, so sweet. Okay, so to make our plum cut jam, I have a saucepan here. I'm gonna just heat it up, then add our plum cut. Next, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of sugar, one tablespoon of minced shallots to really add some savory goodness, one tablespoon of balsamic vinegar to add some depth, and two tablespoons of water to help it move along. And now we're gonna cook the plum cuts down for about eight minutes until it has kind of broken down and Looks more like a jam. Mm. Nate laughs and makes fun of me every time I do this, but it really helps me smell the food. Mm. And it smells super good. So the sugar that I added to the plum cot actually helps to caramelize and thicken our jam. And feel free to break it up as it starts to cook down. So our plum cut jam has finished cooking and it's nice and thick. Looks great. Let me give it a quick taste. Mm. All right, let's make our grilled cheese sandwich. So for our grilled cheese, I like to use like a nice hearty crusty bread and I found this San Francisco style sourdough from Sprouts Market Corner, and I really love it actually because it's made with three main ingredients. All you have are flour, water, and sea salt. Also, this is 100% traceable from grain to loaf, and there's never any artificial preservatives, flavors, or colors added. Even better that it's already sliced for me. So now for a grilled cheese sandwich, I'm just gonna go straight towards the middle for the larger slices. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of goat cheese, slather it on each side. So I'm using two cheeses because the goat cheese and plum cots are like a match made in heaven. The tanginess from the goat cheese pairs so well with like the sweetness and tanginess of the plum cot. And then the mozzarella actually adds like that stretchy gooiness that you need for a good grilled cheese. So I'm gonna work in layers. Next, I'm gonna add a layer of mozzarella. Not too much. Then I'll add a dollop of the plum cot. Get some meat in there, fruity meat. Kind of spread it out. Another thin layer of mozzarella cheese. And then we close her up. Boop. <laughs> so I like to add butter on the outside of my grilled cheese just to get it nice and crispy and really help get that grilled color in there. Um, but I don't wanna get it too messy, so I'm just gonna do the top part, and then once we cook it, we're gonna add another layer to the other side. So the butter side is gonna go down first, and then we butter the other side. Okay, let's give it a quick check. It's been grilling for about three minutes now, and I want a nice golden brown color. Ugh, it's almost there, maybe another minute. Gorgeous, you also have like that burnt cheese crust right there. That's actually my favorite part. And then you can see some of the jam oozing out the sides. This one's gonna be good. Also, whenever I flip my grilled cheese over, just to make sure that the cheese is all nice and melted, I like to cover after the flip. You hear lots of oozing in there. 
we have a beautiful crusty grilled cheese sandwich and I'm gonna cut it open for you. The cheese is nice and melty, but it's not like falling out that makes it hard to eat. The jam has kind of just melded with it. it. Smells incredible. I'm gonna try a bite. Mmm. 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 The goat cheese is creamy. And then, like I said, it pairs so well with the plum cot because you get that like savoriness from the shallots in there. And then it has that little kick of sweet tart from the balsamic vinegar and from the plum cot itself. And then the mozzarella just makes it nice and stringy. This is one of my favorite ways to enjoy grilled cheese. Mm, that was amazing. But don't go anywhere because we still have one epic recipe left. And if you're looking for a meal to cook this summer under 15 minutes, this is it. So for our last recipe, I'm going for a super summery dish here. We're gonna make fish tacos with a plum cot salsa. So for the plum cots, I'm going for the green and the black plum cot varieties just because they have a little bit more tartness to them and I think it would pair so well with some flaky fish. I'm just gonna dice them both up as you would like a tomato, just very small pieces. Again, beautiful colors. What's interesting is that this starts out green and then it turns into this beautiful yellowish color. <gasps> this one. I just love like the darker red black plums. This one's a black plum cot. So I've transferred my diced plum cots to a bowl and now I'm just gonna add the rest of the ingredients for the salsa. I have two tablespoons of finely diced red bell peppers, two tablespoons of cilantro, one tablespoon of shallots, and then juice from half a lime. If you guys want this to be a little bit spicier, you can always add some diced jalapeno, but I'm keeping it mild for Cece. Finally, a pinch of salt, and then we mix, mix, mix. Look at the vibrant colors. I have never seen a more beautiful or colorful salsa. Okay, so now I'm gonna set this aside and really let the flavors come together while we work on our fish. So I have a piece of cod and that's typically what I like to use for fish tacos just because it's firm and fleshy and really meaty. All I'm gonna do to season is add a little bit of salt, pepper, a dash of garlic powder, and a dash of cumin. That's it, to each side and then we'll pan fry it. To cook the fish, I'm just gonna let my pan get hot and then I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of olive oil, transfer the fish onto the pan, and we'll let it cook on each side for about three to four minutes. If you can't find cod, which I feel like you should be able to because they're really common, I recommend using snapper or sole is a little bit thin but it's also really delicious. All right, it's taco time. So I have some tortillas. I like a mix of corn and wheat tortillas. And we're just gonna assemble three. We're gonna add a little bit of fish. For the fish, just kind of break it up. Some cheese. A little bit of crema or sour cream. Just a small dollop. Shredded cabbage for a fresh, crunchy bite. And finally, our plum cot salsa. Taco Tuesday has never looked or tasted better. But before I take a bite, I wanna mention that while plum cots are available throughout the summer, from June to August, each variety is only available for a few weeks. Look for plum cots and other flavorful stone fruit varieties at your neighborhood sprouts. Beach. Beach. Okay, now I'm digging in. Fish is so flavorful and tender. And then the plum cot salsa, I think it's my new favorite salsa because I've had mango salsa before, which is good, but this takes it to a whole nother level. Like I mentioned, if you're in a hurry to make dinner, this took about 15 minutes to make, and I think it's gonna be your new favorite summer 
dinner. Thanks for watching guys. Let me know in the comments section what your favorite stone fruit variety is and how you would use it unexpectedly. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!